Hello again everyone and welcome back to the workbench. Today I'm going to be bringing you my review of the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522 rifle. Before we get started, as you can see, this firearm is completely unloaded. There is nothing in the chamber and there is nothing in the magazine. This is easily my favorite firearm to shoot in my collection. Um, as you can see, I've done a little bit of custom paintwork to it. Really all I did was take those parts off, hang them up, and, and do a my first edition of camo, my first attempt at doing a camo spray paint, and I think it came out kind of cool. Um, but in any case, the rifle itself, without this scope mounted on it, just with the standard iron sights that it comes with, the rifle is under five pounds, and the overall length with the adjustable stock fully extended is under three feet. So the rifle is small, it's lightweight, and it's compact. This rifle is ideal for a new shooter or a young individual or somebody who's looking to shoot something that looks really cool without actually shooting a larger caliber that's going to recoil more and they might potentially be more afraid of. Uh, this rifle is very accurate. This rifle is <laughs> incredibly fun to shoot and with that 22 caliber it is very economical to shoot. Let's go over some unique features of this rifle. Let's start down here at the muzzle end. As you can see this is just a standard straight barrel. There is no uh, attachment, there's no threaded portion of this barrel, so there's no A2 flash hider, there's no muzzle brake, etc. I'm sure you could get something aftermarket that you could clamp on or whatever it might be, but I think for a 22 rifle there's really no need for that, maybe other than looks, so this is perfectly fine, although they do sell this with that threaded barrel for an A2 flash hider or something like that. Uh, moving down, I added a laser, I also added some uh, 45 degree iron sights to pair with this large scope that I put on the rifle. And the reason I put the large scope on the rifle was so that when I'm shooting at 100 yards on paper, I can see my hits from the, from the bench. This is a 6 to 24 power, very inexpensive, I think it costs 50 bucks, you can find them all day long for that. But 22 caliber is not going to recoil and it's not going to damage this. So even though this scope was designed for something like an air rifle, it works perfectly good on this 22 rifle. Without the scope, this gun weighs in at under 5 pounds. With the scope on it, it tips the scales at about 6.5 pounds. So it's a rather heavy scope. Uh, this firearm, the unique thing about it is that it isn't unique. Uh, it functions, breaks down, really kind of comes apart, has the same ergonomic feel as a standard AR-15 rifle, even though it's chambered in a 22, and there's no conversion kit. This rifle, with the exception of the scope, etc., and the paint, is stock from the manufacturer. I haven't done anything to the internals of this, and it shoots the 22 caliber. As you can see, charging handle operates the bolt. Unlike other AR-15 platform uh, look-alikes, like a 1022 or the Mossberg 702 Plinkster, that wants to be an AR-15, this one actually has functional features. So now let me show you how this firearm breaks apart. And I think it's unique in that, again, it's not unique. You simply press your two pins and pull them out, and your upper receiver completely removes from your lower receiver, just like a standard AR-15 rifle. So let's go ahead and set our lower receiver aside and focus on the upper receiver. So again, as you can see, we've got a fully functioning charging handle, and here's our bolt. Now the bolt, I should say, before I get it, go any further, does not reciprocate into the buffer tube area of the lower. This is actually just plastic. The lower receiver is a polymer plastic. The upper receiver is a polymer plastic. So this bolt, because it doesn't reciprocate into that buffer tube area, is actually just this. This is the entire bolt to this rifle. So the recoil, when you pull the charging handle or when the uh, gun fires, that's the recoil management right there. That's how it extracts the spent casing, ejects it, and then chambers a new round. So there's your bolt, and there's your charging handle. Now you notice with the charging handle, you don't have to pull it down to have it come out, it actually just pulls straight out. So that's a little different than a standard AR. And that's it, that's a field strip. The barrel does come apart, uh, but to get that off, you need to remove this cap here. Once you remove this cap, 
you then use a tool called a shoe wrench, S-H-O-O -O wrench, and it slides over the barrel down into there, and you can unscrew it, and that takes out this handguard, takes separates the handguard from the upper receiver, and then also the barrel slides out backwards through the upper receiver. Really, the only time you ever re need to remove the barrel is if you find that your firearm has significantly poor accuracy. There are a couple people who, uh, who received these from the factory and that nut wasn't tightened down all the way. That's one reason to buy that tool and use it. Um, the other, of course, is if you fire maybe four or 5,000 rounds, you're really gonna wanna give it a good thorough cleaning, and in which case you're gonna want that shoe wrench tool. It is noted that a standard AR-15 armorer's wrench will not work with the 1522. You need that shoe wrench. All right, so the bolt, in order to take the bolt down, you simply depress it slightly from here, and that moves your guide rod back just a little bit, and then by pressing up on the guide rod, this spring, their capture spring and everything will come off and that completely disassembles the bolt. You then just pull everything off. To put it back together, of course, is a little tricky, so I'm not gonna do that right now. So let's go ahead and reassemble our upper. To do that, you simply put your charging handle in just like you would in AR, slightly. And then this little notch on the top of the bolt is going to slide in to the corresponding groove on that charging handle and then everything goes right back together and that's it. And then we can get our lower receiver here, which again, functionally is identical to a standard AR-15 rifle. You've got, of course, your safe, your magazine well, your magazine release, your uh, bolt release and everything else. Of course, I did a little bit of coloring. If you're curious as to how I did the coloring in this, simply used a Q-tip, a toothpick, and then some white and red paint with a corresponding paint thinner. So I just got it in the grooves and then I went back over with a paint thinner and a paper towel for any areas that might have been on the flush part. Some people have used white out, other people have used nail polish. Personally, I think that paint would be the better way to go. Then to get everything back together, you just line up your holes with your pins, function check, and you're good to go. Now you'll note I am dry firing a 22 caliber rifle, or a 22 caliber in general. This firearm, especially modern 22s, are designed in such a manner that it is safe to dry fire. Now, I wouldn't dry fire this hundreds of times, but for function checks, anytime I clean a firearm, anytime I disassemble one for any reason, whenever I put it back together, I always function check that firearm. Let's talk a little bit about application or purpose. Uh, purpose of this rifle is to have fun. Purpose of this rifle is to introduce new people to shooting, whether it be children or adults alike. Uh, purpose of this firearm would be to, you can even go out and do some, some small game hunting, squirrels, rabbits, etc. You can do that with a 20, any 22 caliber, whether it be pistol or rifle, so that makes this one no different. With a standard 25 round magazine for states that don't have laws against it, it does come with that. It does come with 10 round magazines as well. There is a company, Aftermarket, that sells 32 round magazines for this rifle as well. This one, when inserted, actually looks pretty standard to uh, an AR, the way it comes down. The 32 rounder almost looks like an AK uh, banana clip, if you will. The way it comes down, it kind of wraps around. It does look a little oblong, but they do make 32 round magazines for it. Again, you can use this rifle for hunting. You can use it to teach people how to shoot. You can use it to, uh, to look cool on a budget, but uh, something else, and, and really the primary reason this firearm was designed was for training. Um, the 223 round, of course, is a little expensive, or a little bit more expensive than a 22 caliber round. And when this firearm was introduced, you could buy 22 caliber ammunition for pennies per round. We're talking three, four cents a round. Of course, that's not necessarily the case nowadays, but this rifle, was really designed to be a, uh, a more economical but yet familiar platform to shoot when you're not shooting a full 223 caliber. All, again, all the functions, all the features on this are the same, and you can even outfit the optics on this identical 
to whatever you run. So for instance, my three gun rifle is a Smith & Wesson MP15 lower with a, uh, a custom upper. And again, all the functions and features of this rifle are identical to this one. So in the future, what I plan to do is actually buy another red dot, probably a better quality one, and put it on this competition rifle, and then take this red dot and put it on this one and use this as my training rifle. That way I can shoot functionally the same rifle for much, much less money. So to summarize, this M&P 1522 rifle is my favorite rifle, my favorite gun to shoot in my collection. I absolutely love it. It's cheap, it's easy to shoot, the recoil is nearly non-existent. The, uh, when fitted with multiple optics, you can shoot this at any range. For instance, the, the scope is zeroed at 100, these iron sights are zeroed at 15, and the laser, which is on it, is zeroed at 25 yards. So you can have fun and be on target at multiple ranges. With the quad rail forend and, of course, the flat top, the all picatinny, you could put really anything that you want on this rifle, whether it be lights, lasers, bipods, scopes, blenders, coffee machines, whatever you want to put on here, you can do it. And at, with its lightweight design, under five pounds, you can hang a bunch of stuff off this and still have it come into way about the same as a standard AR-15. One of these rifles typically goes for around $450, but you can find deals, especially around the holidays, through major sporting outlets such as uh, Bass Pro or Cabela's. They typically run specials on these. They'll get them down to $399 without the A2 flash hider on it, so this model here that you're looking at. You can find these rifles very cheap. If you have any questions or comments, or maybe there's something I didn't cover in this video, please feel free to ask or leave those comments in the comment section below. I will do my absolute best to address any and all of them. So thank you very much for watching. I will talk to you all again very soon.